Hello isopod fans, this is Wally with Supreme Isopods. Nanette and I did a reptile show this weekend and it was a blast seeing people stop by the table and recognize that we had isopods. Isopods are so hot in the hobby right now, it's crazy. But the one question that we constantly got at the reptile show was, I have a crusted gecko, what kind of isopod do I need for crusted geckos? I have a leopard gecko, what kind of isopod should I put in with my leopard gecko? Gargoyles, Lichianus, all kinds of different animals, a snake. What kind of isopod should I put in my enclosure for my animal? Well, we're going to answer that question right here. I remember doing our very first reptile show where we brought isopods. We didn't know what to bring. We brought some dwarf whites, some spring teals, we brought a little bit of everything. We probably had 30 or 35 different species of isopods. Well, we really adjusted since that very first show and we focus more on bringing isopods for bioactive enclosures. We of course bring Hoffman Sagai and some of the other types of uh, isopods that you really wouldn't use in a bioactive. But I tell you what, we adjusted our quantities that we bring for dwarf whites and we certainly bring a lot of springtails and we bring some other isopods that are very focused on keeping isopods in either a tropical or an arid setup for different types of animals. Other than the question about what isopod should I keep with my crusted gecko or leopard gecko or whatever type of animal, we also get the question, how many do I need to make sure that they clean up everything in the enclosure that my animal produces? How do they clean up all the poop? Well, let me answer that question real quick. When you get a cleanup crew, no matter what the isopod, no matter if you get a lot of springtails or not, they're probably not going to take care of everything in your enclosure right off the bat. That's a process that takes a little bit of time. Now, you can certainly go out and get 2,000 isopods to take care of your 20 long leopard gecko enclosure. I highly don't recommend that option. The far better option is to start with a handful of isopods and start with a good culture of springtails. They're not going to clean everything up overnight, but eventually those cultures will build and eventually you'll have a cleanup crew that will help you keep that enclosure clean. This isn't an overnight solution. You're still going to have to go in for a few months and pick up some of the debris left by your geckos. And you know what? You're still going to have to clean the glass if you have a crusted gecko or worse, a lichianus. Before I talk specifics about which isopod is best for either enclosure, arid or leopard geckos, or more tropical, crested geckos and gargoyles and lichianus. Let me mention one thing to you. The substrate, I suggest, include some dirt in the substrate. That's going to help the isopods a whole lot. If you have a crested gecko enclosure set up right now, add some dirt to that mix of your substrate. If you're making a new substrate for your crested gecko or tropical type of gecko, make sure that you add in probably about 50% dirt. The other 50% can be other materials like a jungle mix, koi fiber, something like that. Now, if you've seen my videos in the past, you know the next things that I'm going to recommend. Make sure you have leaves. Make sure that you have dried decaying leaves. Make sure that you have decaying wood. Make sure that you have some kind of a cover like a cork bark and absolutely positively make sure that you have sphagnum moss. You absolutely need a moist area for those isopods 100% of the time. So what we do for tropical enclosures is we designate a corner for the isopods. And I know what your next question is. Wally, my enclosure is more arid. It's for a leopard gecko. Well, you can do the same thing with a leopard gecko or an arid enclosure. Designate one corner to be the isopod corner. Do the same exact thing. Set it up with some substrate, set it up with sphagnum moss, set it up with cork bark. Make sure you have leaves in there, make sure you have decaying wood, and your isopods will love that corner. So let's go ahead and talk isopods. What's best for these types of bioactive enclosures for crusted geckos, gargoyles, lichianus, and the second part is what type of isopods are best for a more arid enclosure like a leopard gecko? 
Before we get into that detail, make sure that you watch until the end because I'm going to bring up two very, very important tips with setting up your bioactive enclosure for either of these two types of enclosures. Now, when we talk about isopods for bioactive enclosures, cleanup crew, everybody's first isopod that comes to mind is obviously dwarf whites. Dwarf whites are the premier isopod for cleaning up everything. The good thing about dwarf whites are that they're parthenogenic and they reproduce quickly. Dwarf whites are pretty small. They're not going to take up a, room, a lot of room until they really, really start populating the enclosure. Another one of my favorite suggestions is giant canyons. Giant canyons are larger isopods. They're going to do a great job of multiplying and taking up that tank space and then ultimately, ultimately cleaning up that enclosure as well. So at this point you're going, okay, done deal. There's my two isopods, dwarf whites or giant canyons. And I certainly don't suggest ever mixing isopods because eventually one of the isopods is going to take over the whole enclosure. The negative with dwarf whites and giant canyons are that they burrow. If you don't care about ever seeing your isopods, dwarf whites and giant canyons are the perfect, perfect solution. Dwarf whites are tropical, so they do need a little bit of a heat bump there. Giant canyons are more tolerant with a wider range of temperatures. If you want to both have a cleanup crew and you want to see your isopods, two suggestions that I'd love to offer to people are dairy cows or milk backs. Porcelio, Lavis, milk backs or dairy cows. Perfect isopods for an enclosure as a cleanup crew. Dairy cows and milk backs both breed easily, so they'll fill up an enclosure pretty quickly. The only caveat to that is that your animals might consider them food items and might grab one once in a while. And here's my third recommendation, and I love these isopods for bioactive enclosures, either arid or a tropical enclosure. They're Porcelionides prunonsis, powder blue, powder orange, or white out. These are excellent, excellent isopods. They stay small, they breed easily, they have a wide tolerance of humidity requirements and temperature requirements. I tell you what, there's nothing like overturning a piece of cork bark and seeing a bunch of these powder blues, powder orange, or, or whiteouts jumping all over the place. Here's a couple of notes or tips or tricks or whatever when you're selecting your isopods for your cleanup crew for either of these types of setups. Number one, if you have a very humid enclosure, let's say that you're working with dart frogs, something that's going to have a lot of humidity in there, the best isopod absolutely is Florida Fast. If those temperatures are a little higher and you have lots and lots of humidity, Florida Fast will breed so quickly and take care of so much in that enclosure. A couple of years ago when I was getting into isopods, the big rumor was that isopods could hurt your animals in a bioactive enclosure, especially the larger ones, especially dairy cows, especially the powder isopods, the powder blue, powder orange, and the whiteouts. There was concern that your animals could be attacked by these isopods. Now, in all honesty, I've never ever seen this happen. I've never seen any reports. The one report that I've seen about isopods maybe having any impact on an animal whatsoever, it later was reported that the animal had died and the isopods were actually devouring the animal after it had passed away. And that's what isopods do. So in my enclosures, I really, really don't worry about that impact. And here's another thing you really, really have to watch out for. If you keep isopods in a snake enclosure, and if ever there was any likelihood that that snake was ever sprayed for mites, or if you ever think about spraying for mites on that snake, be aware that that spray will absolutely kill all of your isopods. So you really, really have some good choices here, whether you're setting up a more arid enclosure for, let's say, leopard geckos or a snake, or a more tropical enclosure for crested geckos, lichianus, gargoyles, or morning geckos, you really have some good choices. If you have any other questions, you don't want to go with any of these choices, leave a comment down below and I can certainly answer those. I'm going to include a video right here of a bioactive setup that we did recently and I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next video. And we keep it moist and we keep something over that sphagnum moss all the time.
So now you're asking, but, so I know what you're thinking right now. I have, so I know what you're thinking right now. My setup is 